Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, here we are once again, ready to get started on a new lesson. I hope you guys are doing amazing and um, we are going to be, um, well, having a amazing lesson today. We are going to be talking about, well, to continue talking a little bit about uh, World Rather, and uh, also we have some conversations that are pending um, for us to solve. So those are going to be the main things that we're going to be discussing tonight because, well, I would like us to basically wrap up the conversations. Those are very important and, um, well, for the practice, you know, it's always good to to get to talk with the classmates or to get to um, to practice in that sense. So that's going to be part of it. Um, then a part of that, of course, you guys remember that as every night, um, we're going to be having the, well, the typical conversation that, um, I like to present to you at the beginning of the lesson, just as a practice. So we're also going to be working on that. And, uh, it's possible that we can also get to talk about a topic that is, um, relatively new, that is going to be the three word verbs. Um, before anything, I wanted to take some time to congratulate you guys because I have been noticing that, um, well, you're collaborating with one another. You're helping each uh, one another on the development of the um, activities in the platform. So that is great. And I think, um, you know, it's a good thing to do because, as I said in the first class, languages are normally learned um, in a community. So the fact that we are creating community here and we are helping each other, um, it means that, you know, we are getting the gist of it. We are, um, you know, getting into a um, a good environment in that sense. Now, also, there was something I wanted to let you guys know. For tomorrow, I want us to do acti an activity that is going to be a little bit different from the regular. <clears throat> tomorrow... I will not be asking you guys the questions, okay? I let you know from now, just so you can think of what you're gonna say tomorrow. Tomorrow, instead of me asking you questions, it's going to be you asking your classmates questions. So let's say that, um, well, the question that I have for tonight is something that, um, well, the idea is once again, to get you practicing, okay? So um, the question is, what would you do if you ever get to win the lottery. Okay, so that's my question for tonight. But tomorrow, you guys are going to be free to ask your classmates anything you want. Okay, so for example, um, you can ask for favorites as I did yesterday for favorite food or something like that. You can ask for favorite drinks. So tomorrow, you guys are going to be taking the lead on that um, area. Okay, so you will be asking the question. It's gonna be basically the last class of the week. But um, yeah, so I let you know from now just so you can think of what question can be appropriate for you to ask. And um, well, just so we have, you know, the same kind of uh, conversation or practice going on as it will be great to have you guys um, interact with one another. I have noticed that you have been doing that, you know, through the chat. So it will be great for tomorrow that you get to talk to the, to the classmates. And you get to interact between um between your yourselves and without having me, you know, in the middle there. So that is going to be something that we're going to be doing tomorrow. For now, as I said, we are also going to be interacting, of course, with the conversations that we're gonna practice. And um yeah, so for us to get started, I will start asking you guys the question for tonight. As I have already mentioned, it's um, what would you do if you get to win the lottery? All right. So I would like to start by hearing from, uh, let's see, Goches. In your case, what would you do if you ever get to win the lottery? Good evening. Uh, I don't know. For example, the 10%, I would use it for things that I always wanted, like different things. And the other percentage, I uh, would use it to invest, for example, in houses or, or things like that, uh, mm -hmm. in order to have more money in the future. 
Very good. That's a great idea. You know, in, instead of only spending and spending it all in one run, um, you would like to invest and make sure that you also have some funds for your future life. So great. Very nice. Um, how about the case of, um, let's see, um, Ana Mendoza. What would you do, Ana, if you ever get to win the lottery? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, well, if I won the lottery, I think uh, I want to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. First or one, maybe can be uh, make a refuse, refuse for animal, animal mm -hmm. refuse. Uh -huh. And... and also, uh, buy a house for my family. And I don't know if, if I want a big lottery. I think mm -hmm. I want. I am. I am going to do. They say the gochi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> invest invest a little bit of your money just so you are sure that you're gonna have money in the future as well yeah cool very good um now when we talk about those places sorry 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 okay so when we talk about places uh like safe places for animals we can do uh, refer to them as um refuge i think and we can also refer to them as shelters, okay? So animal shelters are more specific nowadays and the word shelter is becoming more and more common. Therefore, it will be better, you know, if we get used to to using the word shelter uh, because in a shelter, well, what a shelter does is basically that it provides protection to you or to anything that it's designed to, to protect. Um, and also it provides care, and uh, and food so that is the reason why you know we are using that word more commonly now the word shelter apart from the word um, refuge but yeah it's uh it's a good idea you know it's something nice to do for the world and for um the animal kingdom if you ever get to win the lottery so great very good um how about we hear now from... yes 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 uh, we can we can use the two the two words refuse yes. or shelter shelter mm -hmm. okay yes 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 okay great Thanks. uh now how about we hear from Noemi Estrada so Noemi in your case what would you do if you ever win the lottery I not understand it too. Si se gana la, la lotería, ¿qué haría usted? Ah, ah uh -huh. ok. In my case, uh, uh, ayudar a de refugio animal uh -huh. uh, with my family en de escasos recursos. Ajá, uh -huh. low income low income and uh, well no and uh, viajar okay uh, and uh, ayudar a los pobres okay so you would like to um help also as ana said in an animal shelter um, you will also like to support your family, the ones that have low income. You will like to travel. Um, that is a very, you know, common idea when people are asked, like, what would you do if you ever win the lottery? Normally, we go for that option, the option of traveling. And also, you would like to help the poor or the less benefited. So, great. Very good. Those sound as great ideas and, uh, you know, it is nice to hear that you guys don't only think for yourselves and you also think for, you know, for other people or for mm -hmm. um, other beings that may need help, you know, in terms of like the money that you will get. 
from that um mm. yeah from that situation because it's not something too possible but you know if it ever happens because we never know okay how about we hear from um let's see Ana Men oh, wait Ana Janida see it's Mendoza también so yeah we're gonna go with Ana Janida what would you do Ana Janida if you ever win the lottery uh, good evening teacher <clears throat> evening um I think I would buy a new car specifically uh, a jeep a green oh. jeep okay <laughs> And I would buy a big house. Mm -hmm. Um, only that I think. Okay, and then maybe only save the rest. For me. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I mean, it's your money. If, I mean, it's only an I an hypothetical idea. So, if you know, if you ever get to do that, that would be what you would like to do. So, getting a new car and also getting a new house. I think and that I would take a trip by cruise okay great yeah <laughs> cruise ships are becoming more and more famous uh as time goes by and i think the idea of having everything at one place makes us you know um enjoy that um possibility because it has happened to me before i remember how i used to be very scared about the idea of going on a cruise <clears throat> but now it's just like more and more as time goes by i just have started having this wish that i want to go on a cruise ship um so yeah it's you know a, a bit of an experience that i think we can get to live uh at some yeah. point so yeah very good so having a new house a new car and going on a cruise ship great i mean but if you <laughs> win the lottery and if you do win the lottery like in a country like the united states where, where they it depends about the month this year sorry it depends about the month. Yeah, of course. Yes, it depends I, it, it, on how much you win. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, for example, if you win the lottery here and you get only, what, like $100,000, well, maybe you can get the car. Yeah, that's going to be an easy one. And you can get yeah. the house, but you cannot do, like, so many things as, you know, the idea of winning the lottery in other countries where they have huge amounts of money waiting for people who win the lottery but you know we are only practicing here the idea is for us to think about possibilities and what we would do um now let's move on i would like to hear now from uh let's see giselle in your case giselle if you ever get to win the lottery what would you do with the money i when i won when I win the money, the lottery, mm -hmm. the United States lottery. Okay, you're very specific. Yeah. <laughs> I will buy a house for each other to my family. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to live in the United States. Okay, great. Very it's, good. It's it's very good country for live without work. Okay. But if you are working... It's bad country for me. Yeah, because I have heard. Well, I mean, I I lived there for a while, but my experience, I think, it was a little bit different because I didn't have to pay rent. I didn't have to pay any bills. In my case, I was only paying for you know my expenses, like my food and things like those. Um, so I didn't get to experience that part of living in the U.S. So I don't consider you know my experience as um as what as 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 deep as the experience that other people have while living in the US. But I can obviously see that um, it is something very tiring. Like a lot of people that live there, even people who are natives to the country, like Americans, um, they get tired of working and they get tired of paying bills. They get tired of having to run errands and having to do so many things um, because life over there is very active. And sometimes here, you know, we also have an active life even um people who don't live in big cities we have an active life but it's not like as tiring in some aspects um and it's also probably because of the way we see the world because we are less worried about following laws and respecting every single law um 
I don't mean that we're like a raw country, but like normally we don't think of the loss like every single second. But people in the U.S., they have to be careful, like, for example, where they park, um, how do they say hi to their to their neighbors and basically everything that they do, because everything that they do can end up in a problem. So um, it is a very exhausting way of living. But yeah, but if you have the money as you desired, you know, you're going to do just great. Now, <laughs> in my you. case, if you guys allow me to share uh, what I would do if I ever get to win the lottery would be what you said. I'm buying a house for my family members that don't have one already. For the ones that have it, maybe help them pay it off so that they don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, if it was the American lottery, if it was, you know, those huge amounts of money that they um they give you there. Um, and the other thing, I know this is going to be very selfish and uh, but it has been my wish for a long time. Something that I will enjoy doing is paying a, pro a producing company, like um, not Hollywood, but maybe something like Netflix or something like that, to make an honest and uh, very detailed series about the Hunger Games. It's like my favorite series ever of books. And um, I love the movies as well. But I think that there are so many details that I will enjoy seeing on the big screen. Now, some of you may think, well, then what are you going to do with that? Well, that is a business. Okay. If I pay a producing company to make a series, I know there are thousands and thousands of people who love um, the Hunger Games as well. So I know that I'm going to get revenue from that. So, you know, it's like I will make my dream come true. And at the same time, I will be investing in some way because it will be risky. It's not the same as investing, as, as Gotcha said, like in properties or, or things like those. But uh, it will be an investment, maybe a long-term investment, but an investment after all. Because, yeah, that's like a dream I have always had, that if I ever get a huge amount of money, I would like to um, to pay a producing company to make an honest and very detailed version of the hunger games well let's see now what about you dennis in your case what would you do if you ever get to win the lottery uh well good evening um i'm gonna be honest uh, <laughs> if i won the lottery uh, i would spend all the money traveling around the world uh, i got a, a fancy car uh-huh uh, I would like having parties uh, every single night All right. uh, in the year. But um, thinking, uh, thinking about it, um, uh, I will get a, a house as well. All right. So nice. That sounds great. You know, spending the world traveling, getting to see the world, um, getting a fancy car. That sounds like a, like a nice thing. Uh, and then we also have the idea of, um, you know, having parties and uh, getting a house. Those are, you know, the ideas and, and uh, the desires that you have. And I totally respect them. I think that, you know, at the, at the moment when we see the money, when we have the money right there, we are probably going to make decisions that are completely apart from what we um can imagine before um the thing is that when you get money maybe many people say that people get crazy when they get money so we don't know maybe the ones who right now said that they would like to have like animal shelters and stuff are going to be the first ones on buying a plane or maybe buying uh i don't know like a a, a huge building or buying a private island. I don't know. You know, many things that you can do with a lot of money. Well, let's hear from one more person and then we move on into the lesson. And uh, I would like to hear from you, from Saul. How about you, Saul? Um, what would you do if you ever get to win the lottery? Uh, sorry, teacher. What was the the question about? Oh, if you if you ever win the lottery, what would you like to do with the money? Um, uh, I don't know. I I had never 
Uh, really, I had never think about that, mm -hmm. about winning the lot lottery, because I don't know. Maybe for me, it's something that is unrealistic to happen. <laughs> but in that case, I think maybe to get money for people that that is that for poor people, for example, because I I I know that in the, in the world exists more a lot of population that uh, that they they have lack of resource. Uh, um, for example, uh, the opportunity opportunity to the study in the school and something like that and. With, uh, something like that. Okay, so basically... That is something sure. that I would like to do if I win the lottery. All right, so basically you would like to dedicate your money into charity. Charity, charity. Okay, yes, charity. Great. that sounds great. You know, it's always a good idea as well. That's what some of the biggest billionaires in the world do. I don't know if you guys have ever been into like reading uh, news or reading gossip about um, like famous people or those moguls as they call them. But I have read that, for example, Bill Gates, the um, Microsoft owner, he has said that when he passes, when he, you know, um, goes away from this world, he would like most of his money, not all, but most of his money to go to his charity um, enterprises. And I have also read that, for example, if he were to like give away his money to like everyone in the world, let's say that he had the bank account numbers to every single person in the world, we all will end up being rich because he is so rich that he can make basically every single person in the world rich as well. I don't know how that can be true. It's possible, maybe, because he has tons and tons of money. But, um, yeah, the idea of, you know, leaving your money to good use or putting your money to good use is always great. You know, having um, your money working for other people, even when you're not there. So, yeah. But as I said, it's only a practice here. All I wanted to do was basically to hear your opinions, to hear your ideas. It's not like, I mean, I think not even you, you guys are not buying um, lottery bills, you know, often because I never do. For example, I, the few times that I have played the lottery is because one of my uncles who comes from the States, um, basically every time when he is at the airport, he is always getting people offering him, you know, the, the, the lottery tickets. And I'm just like, I take them and whatever he earns, I take it for myself as well. Um, The most we have gotten, I think it was like $30. But the fun thing about that is that he spent like $60 to buy the tickets and we got $30 back. So basically we lost $30, you know, if we are honest. So yeah, well, let's then continue with this lesson for today. As I said, we're going to be um going to this conversation pretty soon. Um, what I would like to do is that, uh, okay, that's understandable, Miguel. Thank you for letting me know. So what we're going to do is that we are going to um, practice two different conversations tonight. Okay, so we're going to go on the breakout rooms for quite some time because we're going to do two different practices. But before we get to the practices, I would like you guys to get to um, to create examples with would rather and would prefer. Now, here we have come back into the basic uh, example that we have from yesterday, but I want us to practice a little bit about those two um, different forms. So think about things that um, you guys would rather. So the basic form or the, the structure that we're going to be using is going to be something like this. Um, oh yeah, basically here we have it. This one over here. This is the example that I would like us to follow. Ok, para los ejemplos que quiero que ustedes creen sería algo así como esto. I would rather, of course, then you are going to decide what verb you guys want to use. But I would rather, um, let's say, I would rather ride the bus than, sorry, than ride a motorcycle to go to work. That's an example. Ok, I would rather, and I will um, write it down here. I would rather... Um, ride the bus than a motorcycle or then um, ride a motorcycle 
uh, to go to work. Okay, so uh, that will be my example. You guys can think of anything. Uh, here, there is one tiny problem that happens, and it's the fact that uh, we have used the verb right over here, right? So when you do this, when you're using the same verb, there is no need for us to use this verb over here. I did it only because I want you to uh, to place where you're going to be using your verb, if it's a second verb, like a different activity. But for example, if your example is about um, like eating or drinking or dancing or things like those, and you're going to put, be putting two examples that are similar, then leave aside the second verb. Okay, there is no need for you to use the second verb because you're going to be talking about the same kind of activity. Therefore, here I will have to take it away and the sentence will have to be something like, I would rather ride the bus than a motorcycle to go to work. So there's no need for us to say ride once again. Here, for example, if I would say take the bus, I would rather take the bus uh, than ride a kisi, than ride a motorcycle. Ahí sí, ¿verdad? Porque los verbos son diferentes, pero en el caso anterior que yo estaba utilizando el mismo verbo para ambas acciones, eh, no es necesario colocar el segundo verbo, ¿sí? Porque eso simplemente es una repetición del verbo y suena a algo bastante ambiguo hasta cierto punto. So, I would rather take the bus than ride a motorcycle to work to work. That is a nice example. Ahora, antes de llegar a los ejemplos que ustedes van a facilitar, vamos a ver algunos también de los que tenemos acá todavía disponibles. So, first, we're going to see that, um, as I said last night, we have um, the questions of choice, and those questions normally include, well, two examples or three examples of the things you can pick from a category. Here, the topic is basically classes, and... Uh, the person is asking, would you rather take a media class or a health class? We saw this um, question last night. What we didn't get to see was all the possible answers you may see. For example, if um, let's say that the case is that you don't want to take any of them, like you don't like either or, then you can say something like, I'll rather not take either. Remember? After rather, when we're talking about negative examples, we're going to add the not right after rather. Therefore, you will say, I'd rather not take either. So this is the most negative um, answer you can provide. Like when you don't want to do um, any of the activities that the person is suggesting, you can say, I'd rather not take either. Eso significa que no me interesa ninguna, no tomaría ninguna. Then, if you have a preference for either or, you can say, I will rather take a media class. Um, this is because, well, you have an inclination towards this one. I will rather take a media class. Then, um, you, for example, if you want to take the health class, simply you replace this and you will say, I will set, I would like to take a health class. So depending on which one is the one that you prefer, um, you will have to mention it here. That's, that's in the case of having a positive answer. Then we have a third option. The third option is, I would rather take another course than study um, media and health. ¿Sí? Este caso, en este caso, lo que vamos a ver es cuando ustedes colocan un ejemplo externo. O sea, en, no se aclara al 100%, por ejemplo, cuál es el... Eh, el curso que esta persona quisiera tomar simplemente dice, ¿verdad? I'd rather take another course. No dice, I'd rather take, um, I don't know, economics or introduction to economics than study media or health. But the thing is that the person is providing, you know, a, a final idea. Like, if you have an idea of what you want, let's say that you're picking ice cream, you go to an ice cream store and they're offering to have... Uh, um, strawberry or coconut, then you can say, I'll rather have, and uh, I don't know, I'll rather have mango than a strawberry or coconut. Sí. En ese caso, como les mencionaba anteriormente, estamos hablando de have, o sea, el verbo que se usa, ¿verdad? En muchas ocasiones para hablar acerca de la comida. Por lo tanto, no es necesario que tengamos que repetir otra vez después del then, decir than have. 
um, strawberry or coconut. En ese caso no es necesario colocar otra vez el verbo, sino que ya solo decimos, decimos los objetos verdad que estamos rechazando en el caso que estemos utilizando esta forma. ¿sí? Rather do, let's say, than. ¿sí? Preferiría hacer esto a hacer lo otro. Ahora, veamos con el caso de prefer. Would you prefer to study film studies or broadcasting? Here we switch the topic a little bit and we go into film studies or broadcasting. So, as we saw last night, it's a very simple way of asking questions. The only thing here to remember is that when you use prefer, you're going to have to use the infinitive form of the verb. You're not going to be using the base form. ¿sí? Aquí en el caso del rather, utilizamos la forma base sin nada más. En cambio, en el prefer, vamos a tener que recordar siempre que colocamos el to. ¿sí? I prefer to. Prefer to study film studies or broadcasting. How will the examples or the answers sound? Um, well, here you can say something like, I'll prefer to study. Si no le vamos a decir, I'll prefer study, sino to study. I prefer to study uh, film. Ahora, eh, esto simplemente es una simplificación. Ustedes pueden, por ejemplo, colocarlo completo. Film studies. I, I, prefer, I prefer to study film studies. But you can only, only say, I prefer to study film. And that's okay. And uh, that will be taken in any, any, any day. Now, for a negative, it's basically the same as we did with rather. The difference will be that you're going to have to add two between the negative and the verb. Okay, so you have to say, I prefer not to study either. Sí, significa que no tengo preferencia por ninguna, ¿verdad? O sea, no eh, necesito ninguna de las dos. Aquí tenemos, por ejemplo, que no, te, no se utilizaba el to, ¿verdad? I'd rather not take. Directamente vamos de la negación al verbo y no hay ningún problema. En cambio, con el prefer, sí necesitamos utilizar to. I prefer to study Um, I prefer not to study either. ¿sí? Preferiría no estudiar ninguna de estas. Básicamente, cuando decimos esta respuesta, nos referimos a eso, ¿verdad? que no es ninguna, pero de las opciones que nos están dando. Y para eso tenemos la tercera opción, que la tercera opción es la que se supone que ahorita estamos creando ejemplos con ella, y sería, I prefer, en este caso es con prefer, I prefer to study another course than study film studies or in broadcasting. Esto es eh, simplemente el ejemplo, así que ustedes no deben hacerlo así. Es mejor, ¿verdad? Cuando yo digo, I prefer o I rather, que presente cuál es mi opción. O sea, por ejemplo, aquí digamos que esta persona mejor hubiera dicho, I prefer to study um, physical education. Sí, oh, perdón. Physical education than study um than study film studies or broadcasting or in broadcasting. Ahora, esta normalmente este curso también se conoce simplemente como PE, sí. Pero eh, en el caso que ustedes estén hablando, no es recomendable que ustedes digan I prefer to study PE. The best way to go about it is going to be that you say, I prefer to study physical education. Ahora, entendemos ya cómo vamos a utilizar el, tanto el rather como el prefer, eh, tanto para confirmar alguna de las opciones que se nos da, para negar que el, o para pre presentar el desinterés por las opciones que se nos dio y también el poder presentar nuestra opción en el caso que sea necesario, ¿verdad? Que aclaremos. ¿Cuál puede ser nuestra preferencia? ¿Ya creen ustedes que vamos a entender cómo utilizarlos? Si me dicen que sí, pasamos entonces a la parte de los ejemplos donde yo les voy a estar pidiendo ejemplos a ustedes de los que se supone que han estado escribiendo ahorita. So, anything uh, that you guys would like to clarify or is everything clear so far? Muy bien, ya que no hay dudas, entonces esperaría que a la hora que les solicite los ejemplos, no vaya a haber tampoco complicaciones con ellos. Muy bien, vamos a ver. Ustedes pueden utilizar cualquiera de las dos formas. Si ustedes quieren utilizar rather, está bien. Si quieren utilizar prefer, está bien. Pero les dije al principio, ¿verdad? Que la forma que quería que utilizáramos principalmente es cuando presentamos nuestra preferencia 
sobre algo más. O sea, que yo puedo decir, I prefer um, to go to the beach than the mountain, ¿sí? Or than hiking in a mountain, para poder poner eh, un verbo diferente. Pero, eh, básicamente, ese tipo de ejemplos son los que espero que ustedes me faciliten ahorita. One second, guys. Okay, so, uh, let's see. The first example, I hope it'll come from um, Iris. Let me hear your example, Iris. Um, I prefer eat the, the same food and the... And the fried chicken. Than fried chicken. Than fried chicken. Sí, sería. I prefer to eat Asian food than fried chicken. Hi. Than fried, fried chicken. O sea que significa que prefiere comer comida asiática, ¿verdad? Que pollo frito. Is that it? Creo que se nos quedó pegada por ahí, Iris, ahorita. Yes, bueno. Oh, yes. Oh, ok. Sí, creo que está teniendo un poquito de problemas de conexión. Bueno, vamos a ver. Um, how about Boris? Do you have an example, Boris? Yes, teacher, I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer uh, uh, to visit my relatives uh, on weekend mm -hmm. than stay at home. Okay, very good. Visit my relatives on weekends. Wait, weekends than staying at home. Oh, wait, in this case, it's than stay, nada más. Than stay at home. Un segundo. There we go. Stay at home. Very nice. So you prefer to visit your relatives than stay at home. Great. Very good. Now, let's see, uh, Nadia. And my example is I, I will rather be <clears throat> in Sorry? the beat than uh -huh. in the mountain in this weekend. All right. I would rather be at the beach than... Uy than the mountain this weekend very nice this weekend um dennis what is your example uh, i would rather go to a rock concert than go to a choreos concert okay i'll rather go to a rock concert then a corridos tumbados concert no <laughs> a corridos concert <laughs> okay very good so i would rather go to a rock concert than a corridos concert very good very very nice okay daisy what is your example i would rather play the guitar than play the piano very nice i would rather play the guitar Then play the piano. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, how about okay? So here's one thing. A ver, hay una cosita pequeña que podemos o okay, que me gustaría explicarles también de una diferencia que me he encontrado acá. Por ejemplo, cuando yo simplemente puse I prefer, esto se refiere de forma directa a una preferencia general, sí. Eh, esta, esta estructura se puede utilizar de dos formas. Se puede utilizar tanto como el would como así simplemente con decir I prefer. Si yo digo I prefer to eat Asian food than, than fried chicken, eso significa que es como que todos los días nunca me ofrezcan pollo frito por encima de, eh, de la comida asiática. 
Entonces, significa que es algo general, o sea, que día tras día es lo mismo. Cuando utilizamos el would, ¿sí? Normalmente hace referencia a una posibilidad, o sea, como eh, en el caso que eso suceda, yo preferiría hacer esto que lo otro. Entonces, eh, aquí, por ejemplo, los, los fines de semana preferiría, ¿sí? Yo preferiría visitar a mis familiares que quedarme en casa. Ahora, tenemos esta otra versión. Y esta es algo bastante común también. Eh, ya les he dicho en formas diferentes, ¿verdad? Que el inglés es un idioma que a menudo busca formas de poder acelerar el proceso de, de, de las conversaciones. Entonces, aquí en lugar de decir I would, como es lo mandatado, lo normal, simplemente lo recortamos y decimos I'll, ¿sí? I'll, I'll rather, y ese, perdón, en lo personal, es el que más utilizo cuando estoy hablando. Nunca, casi yo digo I would, es ya casi que grabado el decir I'll rather, ¿sí? I'll rather go to a rock concert than a corridos concert. Porque esta es simplemente una contracción. Ahora, esa contracción, como muchas cosas en la vida, puede tener una complicación, ¿sí? Nos puede dar un pequeño problema, ya que a veces también se puede llegar a utilizar como contracción de esto otro. The could. Sí, también se puede llegar a utilizar como contracción de could. El de could no es tan común. Depende del contexto, depende del momento y de qué ustedes estén hablando, es que se puede utilizar el de could. Sí, el de could no es el más común. El más común siempre va a ser el de would. Entonces, cuando ustedes vean esto así, I'll rather, igual, ¿verdad? No voy a entender yo que alguien me va a decir I could rather porque... Could lo que hace es eh, presentar una, como una posibilidad, una duda. Entonces, it rather también es una duda. Es como que estamos demasiado dudosos, ¿verdad? En cambio, con would es más una posibilidad. O sea, algo como en el evento que a esto suceda, esto es lo que yo el elegiría. Sí, so I'll rather go to a rock concert than a corridos concert. That means that if you have the option, like you have two different groups of friends and your friends are going to two different concerts, which one would you pick? Well, you will pick the rock concert before you would go to the other concert. Ahora, ¿cuál es el problema, por ejemplo, en este caso? Si yo dijera, I'd rather not go, ¿sí? I'd rather not go to a, a rock concert. Si se recuerdan lo que les decía anoche, la negación se queda con el primer verbo que se encuentra, lo que significa que en este caso, o la primera actividad va a ser, ¿verdad?, para, para este ejemplo específico. Eh, a lo que nosotros no iríamos, a lo que elegiríamos no ir, sería al rock concert. Sí, elegiríamos ir al corridos concert. Um, me pareció ver que por ahí había alguien con la mano alzada, pero no me recuerdo el nombre. Creo que fue Noemí. Yes, teacher. Okay, so tell me, Naomi. Uh -huh. I prefer visit to Guatemala than Honduras. All right. Have you been to Honduras? What? ¿Ha estado ya en Honduras? Yes. Okay. And you will still prefer Guatemala? Yes. Okay. I have Maybe. never been to... Okay, sorry. Thanks. Well, in my case, I have never been to um to Honduras. I want to go. I hope I can go, you know, this year or maybe the next one. But uh, if you put me to uh, decide whether to spend a vacation here in El Salvador or going to Guatemala, I will take Guatemala hands down. Like, I enjoy my time when I go to that country, when I have the chance to visit that country. And um, yeah, I think it's it's a gem, you know, going to Guatemala. Well, so it seems like you guys have understood, bless you, Daisy. It seems like you guys have understood um, the, no, 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 your mic was off. It's only that I, I was able to see you, Sneezy, no worries. Okay, but uh, you were able to understand how to use the rather or prefer um, thing. So let's move on. And now we're going to um, practice this conversation. I mean, as I said before, We're going to be doing both conversations tonight. Sí, vamos a irnos básicamente por unos 12 minutos más o menos a los breakout rooms porque vamos a estar practicando ambas conversaciones, ¿sí? Ustedes van a decidir 
en qué orden lo hacen en el grupo cuando estén allí, pero eh, lo principal es que practiquemos esta, que es la conversación más larga, y además es la conversación donde más tenemos verdad algunas eh, cosas interesantes. Ahorita vamos a analizar de forma rápida la, los componentes que tiene la conversación de acá abajo, pero eh, lo importante es que podamos practicar verdad ambas conversaciones en el tiempo que vamos a estar en los breakout rooms. So here, um, the conversation is titled, maybe I should try that. See, the conversation goes between Wong Yu and Kelly. So the way it should go is as following. So how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should try that some... Uh, sorry, maybe I should try something like that. Okay, so very simple, right? It's not too complicated. Now, there are a few things that I may use um, linking sounds, but I don't want to spend time or too much time explaining them. Uh, I'm only going to read this conversation one more time so you guys have, uh, you know, the proper pronunciation for it. So this is the way it should go once again. So how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. <clears throat> I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should try something like that. Okay, so there you have it. That's the conversation. Eh, si gustan, ya saben, ¿verdad? Tomar la captura de la pantalla para poderla presentar con los compañeros cuando estemos en los breakout rooms. Y también voy a dar una lectura rápida para esta y así ya nos vamos con la idea fresca, ¿verdad? De cómo eh, iría cada una de las conversaciones. So here we have Carla and Andy with the conversation, what can we do? So this is how it's supposed to go. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well... There's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do is to ask uh, is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, Then, another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top executives. Muy bien. Ahí están, ¿verdad? Las dos conversaciones. Ahora sí, ya vamos a lo que serán los breakout rooms. Y ustedes van a poder, ¿verdad?, eh, practicar con sus compañeros. Tenemos todavía un ratito para poder realizar la práctica. So, we will get back here together in a little bit. Uh, I hope you guys do a great job. You can start joining your breakout rooms just about now. Who could uh, do uh, the favor that put the screen over? I don't took to a screen. You took a screen? Me too. Me too. I, I, I couldn't because the t-shirt uh, changed the, the presentation. Oh. Maybe could I say it? 
could say that? Could say whom? Or oh, anybody have the screen? I have that in my phone. Okay. <laughs> yes. I don't well, know how well. we can do. Ah, there is. You listen? Hi. Hi. Somebody send it in the the WhatsApp group. Okay, maybe uh, because I had only my phone too. Uh, maybe you can take and put over the. Teacher, puede compartir la imagen. No podemos, teacher, no podemos compartir la pantalla. Ok, intenten ahora, creo que tal vez ya ahora sí lo permite. Ok. Um. ¿Cuál es la de arriba? Esta. That's good idea, but how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learned new words uh, best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every, every night before I go to sleep. Maybe I should write something like that. Okay. We can, we have to switch. <laughs> try yes, to, uh, Ana yeah, try, yeah, you can try yes. with Ana Filomena. Do you want oh, I am. Want you? I am oh, want you. Well, you I, I, I am want you. <laughs> no, okay. me because I I. Ah, you are. I am Kelly. Yes, I am Kelly. Kelly. Yes. I am Kelly. Kelly. Okay. Okay. So, Step. how's how's your French class going? Not bad, but I am finding the pronunciation difficult. Well. It take a while to get it to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always tend to forget new words. I learn new words best by writing them on piece of paper and sticking them on single in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Oh, maybe I should try something like that. Okay. It means something. There is someone more that is in the group. I don't I, know. I Andrea? Don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Andrea could be with Ana Filomena and switch the roles. Miguel? Yes. Go ahead, Miguel. You correct us? Did fish? Did fish? What did you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Is that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. That can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. 
What if does the dance work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a, a story on it. This company have the bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of the top executives. Problems con pronunciation, palabra executive. Executives. Thank you. It's, 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 a, it's a little bit difficult to pronounce this word. Executives. 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 Okay. Executives. Okay. Um, Next conversation. Ah, yes. conversation. You can see? Yes, I do. Well, so who your friend's class going? Not bad, but I am finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it's take I will to get it right you call improve your accent be listening or listening to language cds but they pronounce it listening listening by listening i i think listening by listening that is a good that is a good idea. But how do you learn new I seem to forget new words? I learn new words that by writing them on the piece of the paper and stink them on the thing in my room, look at them every night before I go to sleep. Mm, maybe I should try something like that. The next. The second. Yes. Okay. So who your friends class going? Yeah, not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, I taste. I want to wear it right. You call improv your accent by listening to language CDs? That's a good idea, but how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new word words by reading then on page of paper and sticking then on thing in my room I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Mm, maybe I should try something like that. Thank you. All right, so it seems like we all did a great job. I love getting into the breakout rooms and hearing that basically everyone wants, you know, trying to join the conversations, trying to get to practice, because that is the idea. The idea is that we get to practice as much as possible. Hopefully I didn't get, um, or I didn't get to not see you guys not working because, well, I did you know, like seeing you guys work the way you were doing. Um, so 
for today, as uh, per usual, basically that's it. All that we had to do. Tomorrow, remember, at the beginning of the lesson, I told you that for tomorrow, we're going to have a tiny activity um, for the class when we start tomorrow. And uh, it's that you guys are going to be asking the questions. So make sure that you log in um, as early as possible tomorrow as you can have the chance to ask any of your classmates any question that comes to your mind. Um, so yeah, well, all I have to do left now is basically just thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this lesson. And uh, I hope you have an amazing night and I also hope I'll see you tomorrow again. So bye-bye for now and have good a really tomorrow. good one. Okay. Good night, teacher. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.